Here are seven things you need to know about the 2024 Moto Guzzi Stelvio. First up, the legendary foundations. Now it's an iconic name and you may be familiar with the Stelvio of old. It was first introduced at Eichma, but of 2007. And it was aptly named after the motorcyclist haven of the Stelvio Pass in the Italian Alps. And it's only 70 miles away as the crow flies from the Moto Guzzi HQ and the museum at Lake Como. In any case, the first Stelvio featured an air oil called 90 degree 1151cc V twin. It's a consistent Guzzi characteristic, of course. And this one had 106.5 brake horsepower and 113 newton meters of torque for comparison. There was also the NTX variant that had a few of the off-road focused accessories applied and that had a huge 32 liter tank fitted. 32 liters, it's wild. You see reference to the iconic models from the Guzzi heritage, so the old Stelvio and more in little features on this Stelvio. So the louvre is present in the underseat sides, stuff like that. You also see the DRL Eagle, so the daytime running light, as you've seen on the Mandelo. Now, the Stelvio is reborn with the same motor from the V100 Mandelo, which we tested out a few months ago. Check out that video. It's a great bike, really enjoyed it. Links up there. Because you're proud of the Stelvio roots and name, and as such, have just called it the Stelvio with no other acronym attached, as the name itself carries profound respect in the motorcycling community. Now, moving on to the engine, housed in the, tu <laughs> housed in the tubular steel frame, the unmistakable 90 degree 1042cc liquid cooled transverse V twin features. It's got double overhead cams and finger rocker arms and four valves per cylinder, and the compact block provides peak figures of 113.4 brake horsepower at 8,700 revs and 105 newton meters of torque at 6,750 revs. Though they do say that 82% of that torque is available from a super low 3,500 revs. So good for off-road, good for just general riding, great fun. It's a ride-by-wire throttle with five rider modes, so sport, rain, road, off-road, and tourism. That's genuinely what it says on the spec sheet. I haven't just made that up. You've got four levels of traction control and two levels of ABS control. I've sampled this motor a couple of times. First one was in Mandelo at the launch ride in Italy at Lake Como. And second time was here for Bike Matters in the UK. Both times really, really appreciated the bike. and It was good fun to work with. Twist the throttle and you get that addictive throw of the engine left and right. I really do love that character. And it's a shaft drive with a counter rotating balancer. It's a superb bit of kit, as I say. Loads and loads of torque and it's immensely satisfying to ride. And seeing as the foundations of the Stelvio and Mandelo are shared, I'd say it would be equally as rewarding to ride in this Stelvio trim, both on or off-road. So there's a tech abundance here. A six axis IMU with Morelli 11 MP control unit is fitted, allowing for cornering ABS and off-road mode, which will switch off the traction control and ABS. You'll also get full LED lighting and bending lights, or a system that adds lights in the wind deflectors and windshield to illuminate the inside of corners. There's a five inch TFT smartphone ready display, and we did love that display on the Mandelo, as well as a USB port next to the instrument panel. You can pay for an accessory one that goes under the seat if you really want to. You can also also opt for or leave off the new PFF rider assistance, which basically provides added safety through radar sensors front and rear. This adds following cruise control or otherwise known as radar cruise, forward collision warning, blind spot information systems, a lane change assist functionality. And it's a big step for Guzzi. So first for them to include something like this on a bike. And it looks very, very interesting indeed. You see a lot of this on a lot of the new modern adventure bikes and touring bikes as well. Very handy stuff and good for safety. Now following over 1500 hours of CFD or computational fluid dynamic simulations and wind tunnel sessions. The aerodynamics are meticulously crafted for maximum rider comfort and it includes the same electronically adjustable windshield which is adjustable riding up to 93 miles per hour so you can move it up and down up to 93 not that you should be doing that on the road by around about 70 mil. And you've seen this on the Mandelo as well. Hopefully it has stronger motors because I tried raising this screen at around about 70 miles an hour on the Mandelo review and he just wasn't having it. So the, <laughs> just playing about with the, uh, the screen there, the motor couldn't actually put the screen up because the wind resistance is too much. Now speaking of the Mandelo, fans may be disappointed to hear this, but the aero wings that auto deploy do not feature this time around. But I'm not sure it's a huge miss. You'd have to just check out my Mandelo review to find out more about those. Again, link up there. Now moving to the adventure spec because this Stelvio is an adventure bike after all. So let's touch on the suspension and brakes. Adventure riding has of course been thought about here and a tubeless 19 inch front and 17 inch rear wheel is an adventure slash road bike hallmark. Then the 46 mil sax fork with adjustment for rebound and preload through the manual controls is paired with a single sided shock 
with preload and rebound adjustment. It should do the off-road task pretty well. There's 170 mil of travel front and rear and the seat is 830 mil off the ground. It's all well set up for touring and adventure riding for both yourself and a pillion and they are becoming quite synonymous now. A lot of adventure bikes are tour bikes and vice versa. And you've got a wide adjustable aluminum <laughs> aluminum? Why the f*** did I say that? You've also got a wide adjustable aluminium handlebar which gives you good control of the bike riding off-road and a comfortable grasp when you're riding on the road. Braking power comes from Brembo. You've got twin 320mm discs matched to a floating four-piston caliper up front with braided lines, which is very nice for adventure riders. You've got 280mm disc at the rear and that's got a two-piston caliper. Continental provides the ABS here. Again, as I say, you can switch off the ABS when you go into off-road mode. I think that is just the rear. And by all accounts, it should be more than adequate off-road as well as on the road. So continuing with the adventure spec, you've got the spec spec. The engine is still used as a stressed member on the chassis as it was in the Mandelo, but this one has two extra mounting points, so a total of four at the front, and this increases the rigidity and it's therefore more suited for adventure riding a little bit. You have a 21 litre tank with a quoted 5.1 litre per 100 kilometre consumption or around about 55 miles per imperial gallon, but in reality, I don't imagine it would be near that. It never is. The total listed weight for this plucky adventurer is 246 kilograms wet, which is fairly hefty by all accounts. And due to the height and size, shorter riders may need to watch out. Sorry, Brett. But really, even for Felix and I, as we're both taller riders, I'm six foot three and Felix is a little bit shorter. Maybe six one? Moving the Mandela around in tight spaces was quite intimidating. The steering lock was quite small and it's quite a large and expensive weight in your hands. It's very pretty too, so you wouldn't want to drop it. On that, the wheelbase is longer here at 1520 mil. It's 1476 on the Mandelo. So hopefully some tweaks have been made to the steering lock on the Stelvio because dropping this off road, you'll be facing a monumental task, picking it back up and spinning it around or just spinning it around in general. But if you're brave enough to take the path less trodden, the torque will be absolutely mental to use. And off road, this will be extremely rewarding, no doubt. Next up, price and availability. Now, as of writing, the Stelvio price is not actually confirmed for the UK market, nor is the release date, but they say it's going to be 2024. Nothing concrete yet. I I'd guess we'll see it land in the UK early 2024. And after some brief investigations, I found the US price is $16,390, which works out at £13,144 at today's exchange rate. The Mandelo can be purchased for around about 12 and a half grand, but it is listed for 13,500 for the standard model and 15,750 for the S model with the semi-active suspension. La, da, 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 da. So I'd rad <laughs> so I'd imagine it'll be around 15k. Do you agree? Let me know. In terms of colours and trim level, there's two colour variants. Now, forgive me for my Italian here. I know I say ciao, but giallo savana. Giallo savana. Giallo savana. The yellow one. And Nero Volcano. Nero Volcano. Black and grey with some yellow accents. Factory in the radar tech option as well and other accessories like a centre stand, tyre pressure monitoring system, quick shifter, heated seats and grips, panniers, cases. This could turn out to be quite a pricey purchase. In terms of rivals, you can include the Triumph Tiger 900, which is around about £12,000. And there's a new 2024 model, which we should be testing quite soon. The Ducati Desert X, which is around about £15,000. And the KTM 890 Adventure R, which is around about £13,000. That's just to name but a few. I mean, there's loads of options out there. Africa Twin, the V-Stroms, the Tenere. Just, there's loads and loads. Even a Himalayan. So last up, my thoughts. Will this Stelvio be the return of an iconic name? Will it dominate the adventure market? It certainly could do it, though it's an intriguing one really for me. So I think this would be just as good to ride as the Mandelo on the road with the option for additional safety tech. But personally, it wouldn't quite be my first bike of choice to take off road. Now, of course, you'll have to forgive me for now and previous constant comparisons to the Mandelo, but seeing as it's based heavily on it, sans the self-deploying wings. I'd much rather put my money to the stunning on-road character of the Mandelo Eagle, personally. The new radar systems and the unique character of the Stelvio will do well to fly Moto Guzzi even further forward in their next 100 years of motorcycling. And no doubt the Stelvio fans of old will be intrigued by a new take on a classic icon of motorcycling. I just can't imagine those same riders will be wanting to take a brutally heavy 15 grand plus motorcycle down their local byway, but I might be wrong. And also the BMW GS does exist, as do other huge adventurers, which do the task surprisingly well. Maybe that's just another story for another day. We'll await final prices and release info for the Motogazi Stelvio, but until then, let us know your thoughts of this bike down below in the comments. Whilst there, give us a... <laughs> Whilst you're there, 
give us a little subscribe if you fancy it, if you want to keep up to date with our 2024 videos as well. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, my lovelies. <laughs> subscribe.